Thank you everyone who answered um, my falsetto poll questions. Some of those questions were coming from a perspective of like things I've heard people say as just like offhand comments as like the the basic beliefs about falsetto um, and I was just trying to kind of disrupt that a little bit I guess. Overall I think what I have got from the poll is that most people kind of have a rough idea of what false what is meant by falsetto um but don't necessarily know like how it's created or like what is needed for it which i think is a really interesting like difference if i just run down the results 69.1 percent of people said yes to does everyone have a falsetto which yes everyone should have access to a falsetto um i will explain what falsetto is in a sec um 83.5 percent said no to is falsetto always breathy which absolutely it doesn't have to be breathy sometimes it is but it doesn't have to be um and then so do you need more or less breath than you normally use when not in falsetto to vocalize in falsetto or is breath irrelevant this just the the more less or, irre or irrelevant just they kept catching up with each other throughout the whole of this poll. Um, overall, the final results were 27% said more, 27% said less, and 32.4% said irrelevant. And I mean, I'm not counting the percentage of people that said show results as well, so the percentages probably don't add up. This one is, is I think, interesting from the perspective of like trying to create, you know, trying to vocalize in falsetto. Um, like if you don't know how you need to use your breath, then then how can you do it kind of thing. Um, I will explain these in a minute as well. Um, I just want to run through the rest. So uh, is it possible to speak in falsetto? Not sure do you, just is it possible? 88.2% said yes, which yep, absolutely it is. Um, and then should you speak in falsetto? Um, I had 47.3% said doesn't matter. 33.8% said no. 1.4% said yes. Um, I would say it doesn't matter. Um, I would say that you can. Um, I think that the main reason that people say you shouldn't speak in falsetto is because it sounds weaker or what have you. Um, but coming from a vocal like health perspective, if you spoke in it all the time, it might mean that you wouldn't then be able to access modal um, or get, get the muscle engaged as much. Um, but yeah, like I'm trying to just do a really brief overview here. Please ask if you have questions as well. Um, is falsetto sustainable? Which was an interesting question I, that I asked. 33.8% um, uh, said depends, 31.1% said no, 17.6% said yes. Um, I think it was a little bit of a mean question. I guess a better question would be like, is it possible to produce falsetto in a sustainable way? Um, which is, I would say. Is falsetto bad slash damaging for your voice? Uh, I had 37.1% said sometimes, 35.7% said no, 2.9% said yes. Um, so I would say no. Um, again, it's kind of a little bit of a difficult, you know, tricky question. It was a little bit mean or maybe not quite worded right. But but like sometimes, I guess, because if you're like, pro you know, producing it in a the, an, un an unhealthy way or what have you, then yeah, but that could be said for anything within the voice. Like it is possible to do that. My my last question on the polls was, what is falsetto produced by basically? And I gave three options of the false vocal folds, the true vocal folds and tightening the throat. And then the actual, actually the, the, the most percentage that was was res the result was was other slash show results, um, which was 36.4% of people um, it picked that one but the next um most was 34.8 percent said tightening the throat and then 13.6 said the true vocal folds and 15.2 said the false vocal folds and so this question and the question about how much breath do you need those are kind of the main two questions that's like about how, like how what is falsetto right um and that seems to be like not quite known um so i'm gonna tell you so faster speed is a uh, higher pitch um and in order for the vocal folds to vibrate faster, they need to be thinner. The vocal folds being muscle, the muscle can be engaged or disengaged. And basically when the vocal fold muscles are disengaged, that's falsetto. And the reason we get this big jump sometimes when we go into falsetto is because you're suddenly thinning the vocal folds out. And there's a big, big, big range of notes that you should be able to access in either modal, which is what I would, would call the vocal fold muscles being engaged, or falsetto. Um, and that I, I call it the gear change and um, people call it the break and think, I, I don't I don't like that because it's not your voice isn't breaking. It's it's just the muscle is dropping in and out. So it's the, the true vocal folds. Um, it's not by tightening throat. And I, I put that one in 
tightening in the throat for is falsetto produced by because it could feel like there's a tightening in the throat maybe or, or something like that because it's changing in there it feels different um but if you do tighten the throat that would make it harder to get to falsetto um because that would be uh, constricting and in terms of breath you're gonna need less because the vocal folds are not as thick they're not as heavy and there's lots of other elements that impact this but like if you're pushing for more breath as you go up in pitch that's going to result in in hitting a ceiling where you're not going to be able to get further ah uh, you're going to stop whereas if you pull back on how much air you're using ah uh, you can go into falsetto there ah that's my falsetto it's a little bit singy i can speak it ah that's my falsetto and it sounds a little bit like that ah that's my modal and it sounds a little bit like that the muscles engaged when it's in modal the muscles not engaged when i'm in falsetto that's all it is that's all it is um and then we can do loads of really cool stuff with it thank you so much for everybody who commented um like specifics um and gave examples and things it's really really interesting to see and i really really appreciate you taking the time to reply and ask for the descriptive words because i i yeah had some ideas of of what might be said some people um said that their perception of it is like high-pitched kind of unnatural tight thin weaker younger softer nobody said breathy which is cool but um like that i know that is another common one that gets said might be because i ask for it in the poll um but yeah like all of these are like descriptors that regularly get applied you know to falsetto and i guess like one of the things i wanted to do with this this poll um is to kind of be like it's not like a bad thing and like yeah you know if if you're you're not quite sure how to get to it how to produce it and you sort of are pushing like it's not necessarily going to be the nicest sound but getting the right support behind the the sound and knowing how to approach it it can sound beautiful somebody commented about um it sounding false um like in falsetto like false comes from the word um and yeah that is a really common thought um and i can completely understand why that is the meaning of it has changed multiple times and different um people use it to mean different things as well like speech therapists and singing teachers which is confusing and not fair i've got other comments sort of like talking about like um voice changing and like developing the falsetto and like yeah when the voice grows that fal the falsetto become can become more obvious that shift can become more obvious because the muscle is is bigger and thicker so it dropping is going to be more obvious gliding and getting used to um going across that gear change and being able to move from one to the other involves getting the vocal fold muscle to be thinner but still engaged until a point where you can let it go that it's not a sudden change basically somebody commented that they were trained to sing in their falsetto that is a really common thing and that is because um classical music is is a lot of it is sung in, in falsetto and so the gear change happens a lot lower down um so if i'm singing like my cat's just looked at me like what are you doing <laughs> falsetto still i can't go much lower without it starting to get a little bit unstable that's classical singing it's got a particular setup whereas like that's in modal it's got a lot more meat to it and bite to it the the, the space in the larynx has changed because the muscle has changed you know dropped out and so it is bouncing around differently so the resonance is different as well the voice is not just like one thing or like one setting there's like almost unlimited settings in all different elements that you can play around with don't be afraid of the fault of your falsetto like allow it like it it's even if when you first start playing with it it feels like weak or it you know maybe you're not totally keen on the sound or what have you um like persevere for a bit because when we're not used to something we don't know how to do it and we approach it in you know ways that may be making it harder or sound in a way that we don't like the first step is like how to do it and just letting yourself go to it um and then you can play with like getting it to sound in a different way and this is not to say necessarily speak in it but by playing with and allowing the falsetto to happen even if you're not looking to do singing or anything like that like 
I honestly believe that by playing with it and, and allowing yourself to go across your full range, use the vocal folds with the muscle engaged and disengaged, it's going to encourage um, fl more flexibility, particularly if you can get to gliding across that gear change smoothly from modal to falsetto because that means you're thinning the muscles as well and that that's a lot of you know work to do um so I, I think even though you know speaking in it is maybe not necessarily uh the, what what you want to do it's still a really useful tool um and it will give you so much more options give you so many more options i am writing a workshop at the moment um about falsetto um and how exercises to find it and explore it and talking about what it is and and how we can use it and giving examples of different songs and things like that um and and also you know bringing it into speech a little bit as well just just across the board for for all voices um i'm still in the process of writing it at the moment but um that's what sparked doing this poll um so yeah if you're interested in that workshop let me know um, and I will tell you when it is ready and it will be online so anybody um, will be able to access it. Um, yeah.